All right, YouTube. Today we're going to play some Jun Shadow. I'm going to switch it up, a little blast from the past. <clears throat> I guess to kind of give a little overview. Um, I used to play this deck a lot. Like This deck was my jam. And then they printed Field of Ruin. And the deck, uh, I kind of struggled a little bit, but still found it pretty playable. And then humans became big. And that's when things got difficult. The combination of humans and the control decks really caused me to move away from this deck, move more towards the Snapcaster version of the deck that was better against Field of Ruin and could have Snapcaster rebuy removal. But after the SCG from this weekend, we saw the Jun deck do pretty well. And I don't necessarily think that's a mistake because while this Jun deck has faults, this deck, this deck is the best deck in the format against degenerate decks. Between having eight discard spells, Tarmogoyf and Death Shadow for threats, and having traversed the Uven Wall to find it, this basically takes the issue that Grixis has, which is being threat dense, it trades that to be able to just go like discard the discard discard spell, discard spell, threat, can you deal with this? Followed up by like Liliana, and then maybe just like a little bit of grind to just kind of push over the top. You've also got the teamer battle rages. Um Teamer Battle Rages, and then the one Gore Clan Rampager to just kind of have a little bit more of that effect and be a player to traverse. Now, some of the deck building constraints. Um, Bobble is a must in this deck. You have to play with Mistress Bobble. Because of Traverse, you really have to play with it. You need it. Um, Tarfire is another card that I do believe you need just to be able to enable Traverse and to just make your Tarmogoyce large. Make sure these are six sevens, five sixes at all times. You know, make sure that that card is just a legitimate threat. Because when Tarmogoyf is small, like in Jund, when it's only a three, four, or four, or five, it's not a reasonable cloth. In this deck, it's a six, seven, or maybe sometimes it's a seven, eight. So move over to the sideboard here. Um, I built my sideboard because I think that a good reaction to Dredge is Tron. And I think all of these Death Shadow decks can kind of struggle with Tron. So I want three Disdainful Strokes to be able to handle that, as well as the fourth stub. Um, then moving down, I've got Brutality to kind of handle the small creature decks. because um, And Burn. A couple more Fatal Pushes to round out just the removal suite. We've got, you know, six one-mana removal spells to play against Burn, or play against uh, Humans, which is important. Surgical for the Dredge decks, and then other combo decks. Anger of the Gods for, for humans, small creature decks. And then we've got two trophies to just kind of round it out. You know, we can probably play these against Tron, play these against Blue White, maybe the Mirror, but I think that's probably kind of loose. Uh, yeah, but let's run this through a league and give this a whirl. So, yeah, this was the original Shadow deck. The, it, it played white, so this isn't quite the original Shadow deck, but. Um, the original one played white, and th this one's kind of the next evolution of that. Oh, we're already paired. And when it switched to play blue, which gave it a little more of the Grixis feel. So I, I played this last night, and I went 0-3. Oh uh, I think I've made a couple mistakes. Played against blue-white. And then played against Tron twice. So we're going to keep this hand. We, this is a virtual second land drop. We have a discard spell. If we draw a land, we can have a discard spell threat. So it's a pretty solid hand. And our traverse is not quite close to being on. But we, as long as we draw, if we draw a fetch land, our traverse will be on. Waste. So we're playing against an Eldrazi deck. That's not good. Yeah, that's really not good. Now we really need a land. 
and we are just going to start running these things out there to uh, make sure our tarmac waste large. <clears throat> By the time we cast, it's bigger than these reality smashers or um, reality smashers or thought not seers. Deal. Again, we're just going to start. We only have one out to this, and it's a K command. So, or it's like ulting this. And if we ult this, we're not even going to have these cards in our hand, anyways. So, we might as well just start casting them to make this tarmac voice big. And you'll land. Fetch land off the top would be nice. I'll drop you in right there. Fetch land. So we're going to go get probably Blood Crypt. We don't have to worry about our blue spells because we're not ever casting a blue spell. Traverse is always on. So we're going to be able to make our Tarmac Wave for 5k. Which is pretty solid. Let's call it Dismember. Okay. Now our voice are four fives. So we could play Liliana, but I don't think that we're going to do that. I'm actually going to fetch so that we can tar fire ourselves or tar fire them if we need to. Let's get another green source. We're not going to need that many black sources. Like if, they, if our opponent has another dis, another uh, dismember. So we can grow the Goyf out without taking so much damage. And then next turn, we're going to play this Liliana and just start going up and likely discard the Tar Fire. We might be able to finagle thinking of buying Carmelois for this. Is it worth it? Um, I don't know, to tell you the truth there, Doom Crotch, like, I don't know if having Tarmogoyf just for this deck is, is legit. Five. So we can take four. Block this. I think we're going to block... I kind of want to block this to keep them off of the land. We go to one, then I edict them. Yeah. So we're just going to cut them off land. So let's just go block this. We go to one. I'm still going to tar fire uh, them in order to make it so that my tar wife can't get dismembered next turn. All right, so we hit a temple. They're going to sack their reshaper. Which hopefully they hit them when they can't cast. They're a reality smasher. So let's hope they don't rip the way to get that thing into play, or we are dead as a doorknob. Okay. This early chalice is what did us in here. Power. All right, so we need Tarmogoyf or Bust. That means we're dead. We can't cast the Gore Clan Rampager. We can't Traverse, and they're going to be able to play the Reality Smasher next turn. Just make sure they don't discard it. Yeah. Scoop it up. The old Turn 1 Chalice got us. Was on the play too. We do have some cards to bring in. <clears throat> Not too too much though. And it's gonna be nice being on the play. Okay, so we want these trophies.
Maybe these strokes. These stubs probably aren't great. We probably don't need the Rampager. K Command's fine. This is fine. Tarfire's decent. Stroke's probably better than Stub. <clears throat> Discard spells are important. Battle Rage is important. Yeah, I don't think we need the Rampager. Let's bring this. Let's try this. Give this a whirl. Hopefully, we're not going to get turn one chalice, at least on the play. We're going to be able to get out of it somehow. Oh, we probably still win that game if we hit. Probably should fix my camera. It looks a little messed up. If we hit our second land drop on time. Yes. And. Gosh, Liliana is really good against this deck. And a turn one discard spell for a chalice is important. Yeah, then I would recommend that. I'm going to keep this hand. I think Liliana is very good against them. We have a redraw for free, and we can get underneath a chalice. Oh, and you'll get, pour some tea water. I'll be right back. On your nightstand. All right, hit a gemstone cavern. So now they're going to be down a bunch of cards. And they just, like, eternal scourge. What a combo. So we check out our top card. We don't want breathing pool. So let's go get overgrown tomb. And just get them. Oh, wow, they just don't have anything going on here. Wow, that's a loose one that we keep in there. This hand makes me wish it was Grixis. Why do you say that? They put a card on top. They put a card on the bottom. So there's Temple. And then they get to play Scourge. I'm going to bobble myself. Fatal push. I don't know if I want that. Probably not going to. This might miss, but we're going to just cast your spells. Gunpowder's fine. I don't think I want this. So I think. I think I'm just going to fetch a watery grave. Tapped. I'm going to feel kind of stupid if I hit like. Another fatal push, or they hit a thought not seer or something here. But we'll get Tarmal Lift, which is good. The edict also like relevantly doesn't doesn't do anything here. Well, it kind of does if they pop scavenge around. But that's pretty slow. We'll probably be able to get around that. The waste. I kind of hope they don't have a play. Oh, that's. Oh, the mana monkey's kind of annoying. Trophy. Trophy doesn't really do anything, so I think we're just going to play this Goyf. Play this tap land. Then pass. My opponent's going to attack, hold up the scavenger grounds. We're just going to take it. We're kind of in a tough spot.
Maybe I should have just gotten Liliana Edict so that I could go Tarma Voice Trophy. I don't know. All right, well, it's nice they're doing that right now. So take this. Now we can trophy this, fetch, block, and then eat this Eternal Scourge. Our Eternal Scourge just large enough, which we are all about. I might hit their temple. No, because then my Eternal Scourge is not going to be large enough to block the Eternal Scourge. So this does kind of suck that my, it rants my opponent, but that is just kind of like the cost of doing business. I probably should have blocked first. Well, the fact that Tarmogoyf is pretty good against the Eldrazi decks is nice. Like, you're usually just bigger than them. Let's fetch. This will get me Stomping Ground, I guess, to get into play tapped. Ooh, did they rip a Dismember? Yeah, they did. That's okay. They should dismember before blocked. But that's all right. Forge down. And then we'll edict this. And hopefully they don't have a follow up here. A brick would be nice. We're not going to worry about the top of their deck. We're going to worry about ours. Disdainful stroke is nice. We'll edict this. Hey, Teddy, how's it going? I could have gone up and gotten their last card, but with the counter spell on top, we should be in pretty good shape. My opponent said LOL. I don't understand. Maybe I should hit him with the lizard. Yeah, I mean, maybe Tarmogoyf's okay now. Yes, I did. I saw your tweets. I appreciated it. My phone says, should have flushed. <clears throat> had it covered. And now we played the big boy. Roll up, get their last card. And now we should be in pretty good shape. Like we got a fade of reality smasher, but like such is life. So we might board out our strokes because they've got these. Slizzard. Yeah, we might have to hit him with a slizzard. If he gets mouthy again, we'll send the Slizzard at him. A Tarmogoyf would be sweet. There's just something here. Tarfire is not that great. I mean, I guess we just knock the top of the deck and hope there's not a Reality Smasher there. I guess that's our plan here. Don't, don't get me. Nice. Because we were ready for the Smasher. Hey, Ben, how's it going? Man, Moto's tweaking out. Moto just can't even handle it. <clears throat> so the strokes might be a little cute now that they're aware of it. 
I think we might want a little bit of removal on the draw. But the problem is, is that a, um, you know, we're still just going to get wrecked by Chalice on one here. Stubborn Denial is just not good besides hitting Chalice. Did not realize we were attacking. Yeah. Um, could board in more of these. Probably can cut some removal. Cut some of this. Bring in some of this. Though being able to counter smasher is pretty nice. Counter spells are always a little bit worse in the draw. Maybe I like split it, but I want to be able to just bring back <clears throat> Why do you like Gore Clan, Teddy? Just as like a four mana four four? That's kind of brawl. My guy tells me to do something like this. Maybe cut one of these on the draw. But getting Delirium is just like so important. Like I remember like the cost of boarding with these decks is that you can't you need like your wraiths here. So you have to be able to hit Delirium in this deck, so you can't like sideboard your wraiths out pretty ag that aggressively. Same thing kind of like with Tarfire. I think we're just gonna like do this and then knock the top of the deck and hope that. You know, we don't get whacked by a reality smasher. <clears throat> or hope we don't get whacked by a chalice. This chalice will be pretty pretty backbreaking as it was in game one. Man, Moto is tweaking out. <clears throat> I probably should like go through my computer and like wipe some stuff though. I've had my computer for a while. This hand is. Uh, I mean, Liliana is one of our better cards. A lot of good interaction. If we don't get Chalice on one here, we should be okay. <clears throat> All right. So what do they exile? They have one actual Mulligan, and then one Serum Powder Mulligan. So the Eternal Scourge is nice. They kept that hand. So it's kind of like they mold the seven, which is kind of sweet. Don't turn one chalice me. All right, you get a scry. We'd like to hit another land drop, so we're going to cycle our street race before we fetch. With the card on the bottom. Nice. All right, trophy's a nice draw. We are all reaction. Okay, so we hit our land. So let's let's just play this because we don't have a threat, so we might have to fetch a we might fetch a basic with this. Yeah, we're just gonna take this reshaper. Because that card's super annoying. The Scourge is annoying as well, but we can get that with the Edict. Mimic. Mimic's okay. So this is going to take probably the Karn. I can just trophy the Karn. They're only going to plus it. It's not like they're going to go down to make a Construct. And then that helps set up our... So if we take this Eternal Scourge, push this, Edict this, we're pretty much set up, then we can Trophy this. I think that's what I'm going to do. I think that it's... And I can't even necessarily cast this. And having this and, like, doing this without targeting it is kind of nice. So, yeah, I think this is what we're going to do. We're going to leave them with the Karn, but we might be able to pin the Karn in their hand and get rid of it with Liliana. <clears throat> I don't necessarily think that we have to thought seize this Karn. Karn, push, then edict. Isn't that the same thing? But then we've got both. So what I'm worried about is that let's say we take Karn. 
Next turn they cast this. We push this. Edict, edict one of them. We still have an eternal scourge that can come back off of exile because we're going to have to target it. We can't block it. Like if we get rid of this, our opponent casts the one from exile. We push this. We edict it. And then they're left with Karn and we have a trophy for it. And like the Karn's not probably not going to do anything off the first hit. Yeah, I think this is what I'm going to do. I think this is the best way to leave them with like the least amount of resources. Because this lets me deal with the two scourges. <clears throat> and I can like trophy the Karn. So they cast, yep. Yeah. Then I guess we fetch a red, I guess we shock ourselves. We're going to go to 11 and a 9. And we could be a little conservative, but we're going to kind of feel stupid if we, like this, this team or battle rage is going to be pretty much like an I win card. And we're going to feel pretty stupid if we get, it gets stranded in our hand. Yield through this turn. Oh no, what happened? Oh my gosh, no. Oh, I must have just hit yield through turn too too late. That's frustrating. Chalice on one. Okay. That's so annoying. Now I gotta figure out. Now I gotta like fix everything here, because we're gonna we're gonna be at three more life points lower than we want to be. Yeah, I'll get these off here. Oh, that was annoying. So they can actually cut us off red. That's okay. We'll just go get a swamp. That actually puts them further away from Karn. So I, I should have thought there for a second. Um, well, that's nice. That's really nice. That's basically like guaranteed going to be able. To, now we're definitely going to be able to get the Karn out of their hand. And we're still going to be, we're still okay here. We're going to do this in their upkeep in case their last two cards are Thought Not Seer Temple. All right, well, we got a Thought Not Seer. If we have a Thought Not Seer, we're going to be in trouble. I think that doesn't cast Karn. All right, draw two. Let's ditch. Probably just ditch the Tar Fire. I really want to keep the Rage because I doubt we're going to need all of these removal spells. And it's, if we hit a Death Shadow or a Traverse, this Rage probably wins us the game. So I'm going to ditch the Tar Fire. That could be kind of greedy. So what do they have left? Okay, so now let's just get rid of Destroy Target Artifact. Target player discards a card, Destroy Target Artifact. Let's just do this right now before they get another thing in play. Yeah, that's what I thought, Teddy. You guys didn't think we really needed the um the tar fire. Especially when we have a push and a trophy. Oh, it's kind of cool that I can trophy that. What does this do? Is this better in play or is it better to have this on three? Probably better to have this on three, because then I don't have to kill this. If I don't want to, but I likely will still get it. Yeah, I can still deal with the Nexus.
What could they play? They could play. I guess I still, even if they play a two drop or a three drop, I still just eat a kit. So let's just deal with this. Let's stone range them. I wonder if there's any merit to trophying the temple because it actually cuts, like, it's like a pseudo wasteland. So again, I could I could hit this temple, cut them to three lands. I don't really want to play my stone card as a stone rain though. All right, now we're in good shape. So let's get them to sack creature. As mopey as this is, then I'll draw out the temple. And we're still not even dead to, like, even if we attack, we're not dead to Smasher. That's annoying. That's actually not that bad. Because, like, with the Liliana, I can deal with the card they get. Yeah, so let's just deal with this. We're still not even dead to a Smasher. Assuming the card goes into their hand. Yeah, it was a land. So I'm tempted just to battle rage right now because it makes it so that I kill them through. And this was kind of stupid of me to do because I should have just played my land tapped. I'm going to battle rage right now because I'll kill them through Thought Knots here. So I should have just gone like this and played my land tapped. The reason we're doing this is because if I just attack for seven and they play a uh, Thought Knots here, then the game extends by one more turn because they take my um, they take my battle rage, and we don't. And now the edict has any creature they play covered, with the exception of like a man. So I should have played I should have played my stomping ground, been battle raged, and then ticked out. That would have been the right play there. I just came to my line a little too late. All right. That's a good way to start the stream. Yeah, I was likely going to use like hold the trophy, but I just like there might have been merit, you know. Nineteen viewers. I hope everyone's having a good night. Hopefully, we get two leagues in. These shadow leagues usually last about an hour and a half. So, as an hour with an hour and a half, then uh, I can hopefully do two. I would like to do two, as I'm not doing any more streams this weekend. I'm going down to see my grandfather. Yeah, this hand's pretty sweet. It's pretty aggressive. It kind of sucks that we drew the stomping ground. The stomping ground, like just like in Grixis Shadow, the stomping ground and the steam vents are so bad. But, oh, so we're playing against the giant. All right, so we do not want another land. But we also might not want to cycle both of these. So let's go get Overgrown Tomb. I do think we want to cycle once. We drew a land. I guess we're just all in for, we're going to cycle no matter what, because we need to see cards. We just might have to be conservative with our fetch lands. All right, so we hit Eternal Life. hey -o. What is this? So now we got to play even slower here. Let's just take the Liliana. Yeah, we are going to go slow mode here. She hit a two drop, bud. I hope they didn't hit a two drop. They didn't. Yeah, so we drew a death shadow. I think I'm just going to go swamp Tarmaloif. With this Rix Factor, 
We don't want to take that much damage. Let's just hope that they didn't rip their own Liliana. The nice thing is we might be able to fight through the one half of the risk factor using our own Liliana. But we are at a virtual low life here. Let's take one of these lands. And if they risk, I'm going to take the first risk factor. They ditched Black League Cliffs and they played A minor. I guess we attack and we just hope to not get Blood Braid Elf out of this game. What makes Blood this this card got this is another reason this card got worse is because of Blood Braid Elf. Like, even in these fair matchups where you think Jun should be good, this made this worse here. We're probably going to have to let them draw three cards, unfortunately. Okay, we can deal with that. They're going to need another threat here. Wow, they only have... So they're just going to, like, get beat by this Liliana. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go Edict Double Shadow. Keep this land in my hand. So what's worse for us? A Coligon's Command or a Maelstrom Pulse? And it's probably a Maelstrom Pulse. So I'm going to play this land in order to be able to pulse one of my shadows if they target it, and then we kill them. If they Coligon's Command me, it's likely too slow, so we can just Edict again. Uh, we're just going to let him draw three. And this is why, like, these shadow decks are just the better version of these decks here. Like, this is kind of case in point. My whole deck is leaner. I'm 18 lands. Like, you're just so much lower the ground and stronger than they are. So I think I just want this in all of my removal here. Um, we don't want the battle rages. The tar fires are not that great. Stubs okay. I like stub now that Blood Raid legal too. Well, if we take four, they go like red land bolt us and we die. They hadn't played a land yet, Teddy. If they'd have played a land and hadn't left up red mana, then I could have just taken four. Yeah. But. Yeah. Not in love with a lot of street rates they're playing on the risk factor plan, but they might not have, they might board them out. I don't know. Yeah, let's just try it like this. And that's why, I mean, this right here, like if anybody that's watching here, it's like, just put, like, we might lose this match, but like, Still, just put down your Juns, put those down, and pick up this deck. If this is the Jun deck you want to play, because you're just a Jun deck that actually kills people. All right, we're going to keep any hand that's functional, and this hand is very functional. Last thing you want to do is mulligan. This is a good play for my opponent. I see a lot of people that board out their discard spell and their Jun versus Shadow and you should keep your discard spells in because you just need to be able to like you don't let them outspell you. So I'm actually gonna lead with this watery grave because I'm not sure what I want this land to be. Like, I, I, it, it might have to be Stomping Ground or Overgrown Tomb, but I really don't want to. It's probably going to be Stomping Ground. 
because we don't have that many red cards in our or over because we don't have that many red cards in our deck. Well, we just drew an overgrown tomb. So we're pretty naked to a Liliana. Like Liliana is going to be pretty bad for us here. You got your time of life. Your thoughts about using four inquisition? I don't really understand your question. What are your thoughts about using four inquisitions in Death Shadow? Like, do you think they shouldn't be there? I don't exactly know what you mean. Liliana? Never lucky. I'm just going to run this Death Shadow out because even if it gets bolted, um, then if it gets bolted, then we are, our other traverses are turned on. We do let that, we do give them the opportunity to like untap and K command it, which is, would be kind of vomit inducing. Uses two, uses two and four. Oh, you mean the, the Grixis versus Jun. The Jun deck needs all four because you're, uh, you're just trying to play a slower game. You're trying to play a faster game. So you don't want the game to go long. We are going to get K-commanded. Oh, wow. We keep all our cards. Okay. This is all right. Kind of annoying. But we get to go double shadow next turn. Or we can go... Now Now we're going to go double shadow. Because this goes gets me breeding pool. We can traverse, traverse. Now we get bolted. We get absolutely destroyed by Maelstrom Pulse. But if we play one threat, then Liliana bodies us. Because they're going to go Tarmogoyf and Liliana next turn. I don't even think these decks run. Do these decks even run Pulse anymore because of Trophy? Two discard self chain rolls like No, you need the... I don't want to get a Goyf, because if I had five mana, Teddy, I would have gotten a Goyf, but I just didn't have five mana. You need you need eight discard spells when you play this deck, Mike. And yeah, because for this exact reason. Because if they went Liliana Edict, and then we didn't have an answer, then we'd be just super dead. We still run one pulse? Okay. I'm going to hold this land. So the elf resolves before the shadow does, before the, or the inquisition resolves before the shadow does. Coming at me. Ooh. Is that good? I guess I don't really care if they chump. Like if they chump whatever. Then I'll just make them discard a card and rebuy. I still might make them do that because we know they have four spells. Yeah, I don't think this. I don't think that this uh, this blood red elf really matters once it's on the battlefield. Ooh, them being able to discard risk factor is pretty nice for them. Okay. So we know they still have a Tarmogoyf. That's pretty sweet. So <clears throat> we can't really afford to trophy this Bloodbraid Elf because we have a turn away coming down next turn, and I want to discard this overgrown. Unless we go, our goif will be larger. Our death shadow will be larger than turn away. If we go trophy here, kill this, play goif.
kind of tough. We could just attack. We could attack Liliana and then trophy the Liliana when they block. But we also could trophy the Liliana after they do everything. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to attack Lily. We're going to attack Lily. We're going to play our Shockland Taft, play Tarmogoy Pep Trophy. When they go to plus their Liliana, we'll ditch the... We'll blow up the Liliana. I also don't want to give them mana on their turn that's untapped. So let's attack the Liliana. There's no need to shock when you have a risk factor in the graveyard. This game's going to go much longer. Now, we're leaving this discard in because this plus one is basically only affecting them. So they're like, this is kind of card disadvantage from them if they plus it. This gives them another land, but they're likely discarding spells and we're not discarding anything. Now we're in a little we're in trouble if they play their third Liliana and then Tarmoloid. Tireless Tracker into Tarmoloid. Okay. Take your answer. So <clears throat> didn't see your answer. My internet was really bad. So the Jun decks need eight discard spells because you don't want to play a long game. I feel stupid for not shocking myself. So, like, we kind of just got to play Tarmogoyf and pass. The Well, okay, so we're actually okay trading a Tarmogoyf with this Tireless Tracker if my opponent does that. And if we just bounce Goyf, that's okay as well, too. So let's just start by attacking here. If they go to double block, we'll just deal with this Tracker. Yeah, they see around it. So good play from our opponent. Yeah, you just need eight discard spells because you don't want to play a long game. If you want to play a long game, then play then play a longer game, play Grixis, which might just be the better thing to do. Ooh, are we getting K commanded? We getting hit with the old draw step action here. I mean, we're definitely gonna cycle this. Because, like, we can hit a stub. And now we have a good attack with our shadow. So let's just think. Let's look here. <clears throat> attack with shadow. Yeah, I think we just attack with our shadow. Because we can't really... Attacking with Tarmogoy doesn't do anything. Attacking with everything just leaves us dead. So we're just going to ship in here with Shadow. It would have been pretty sweet to just cast that Street Wraith because it just, they just can't block it. We're just going to deal with this Tracker. Our opponent gives us the option to. We could deal with the Tarmogoyf. The Tracker is going to bury us, but the Blood Bright Elf is going to bury us as well. So, like, we're not winning on card advantage, so let's just win on the battlefield. We're not going to win this game going long regardless, so let's just keep the two biggest things in play. Yeah. All right, scavenging news is nice. Scavenging is actually pretty nice. I think we're in quite a bit of trouble here. All right, that was a decent draw. The problem with killing the tracker, Teddy, is like we don't really have good attacks. And if we can't win on the board, then we're going to lose to their draw steps. We're going to lose to this tracker if the game goes long, and we're going to lose to the top of their deck if the game goes long. We have to start winning the game on some level. 
And I think that has to be the board. We're going to lose the tracker on the board too, but at least that's going to take time and mana. And we attack. If we have a removal spell, they just win the game. So I think we're just going to hold off. And we're not gonna like we're we're too far behind I think to play around pulse at this point. Uh, we'll take three. We'll take four. Yeah, there's land. Seven. Seven. All right. So once again, we need a removal spell, or we're, we're still dead even through a removal spell. Right, we, uh, we can roll back, get Death Shadow, but if they see it, we're dead anyways. Maybe I was supposed to let them draw. Oh, they're gonna eat. They're gonna eat both my things anyways. We were dead anyways there, but I shouldn't have made that. I mean, that play was just sloppy. Like I should have just plussed on this Bloodbraid Elf, and then we still would have died. <clears throat> so it was probably that was a little sloppy there towards the end. I don't know. It, it's 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 a tough spot because if if we let Tracker live and they bury us in cards, but if we let Tarmogoyf stay in play. Then they bury us in. Uh, they're gonna bury us in their draw step anyways, because they're drawing better cards at that point. How's it going, Nameless? Either way, we were in trouble there, and definitely needed needed to get lucky. Great, good. You beating up on those dredge, de dredge decks or what? Dude, I gotta play your list again. We are 2 0 in this league, 1 0 in this league, something like that. We're rolling against the Jun deck, which is never good. At least they mulligan too. They're helping us out. Bottom, bottom, ley line of the void. Rut row. But at least they kind of mulligan to five. We want that. Let's. Oops. <clears throat> Cut one lava, one brutality, one dark stream. I put four ley line on the side. Yeah. I'm a big ley line guy. I like it. Like, it just wins games. Like, it, it adds a lot of variance, which is kind of annoying. But it does just win games. It's not a bad draw. We're gonna need to draw a threat though. The last two draws I get. Yeah, I don't think that's a it's that bad of a matchup. We're gonna be like a hundred percent above the rim there. Like I think that makes me feel stupid after taking the Tarmal Life, but Oh, do you have a discard spell too? You savage. Probably gonna take my probably my phone. All right, we got a plan, ladies and gentlemen. And the plan is to raise. Man, we're already 11. Force there's the catacombs. We're going to get a tapped blood crypt. Gonna let him trophy our rampager. Yeah, I don't. I don't think the dredge matchup's that bad, to be honest. Okay, so we do another catacombs. We don't slam a Liliana. So we can Inquisition to make it so their turns a little more awkward. We sink a bunch of our mana, but then they get to untap and do something. So let's just go like this. This might be a little loose. 
let's take this trophy, play this pass, and kind of lean on him a little bit. I love these shadow decks, but I fled out so much. I'm still playing the game that's why I'm having health level problems. Sometimes you're just on the wrong end of it, man. So, they played their swamp. They didn't crack their fetch, which is interesting. I guess, I don't really know what they're worried about. All right, well. Hard mode. All right, that's not good. Don't play like a Tarmaloid. No. Just fetch pulse, please. Yeah, you can find him on on the 5 list. We're in a tough spot, ladies and gentlemen. It's kind of like first one to hit wins. And they just have a million draw steps that are better than mine. Because we don't have Traverse or like Bloodbraid Elf. That one's like pretty good. So the biggest this thing's gonna get is three power. So I think I'm just going to, and we have so much mana that I'm just gonna do this at the end of their turn. They crack me. We can actually don't have a land to fetch with this because of how our fetch lands are set up. Like we don't have a second overgrown tomb. Trophy. We're going to keep that. So draw trophy, draw stomp from ground. Okay, let's play the ground. Fortunately, we have to trophy this. It's been a bit of a rough one for the home team. And they're just not playing land. They're not playing anything, so like their hand's got to be just like loaded. We have about four color. I think it's okay. I am attempt I'm tempted to try it. So like it's better against the degenerate decks than Grixis Shadow is. So it's really it's good there. They play the land, okay. Alright. Feed this to the wolves. Stub would be sick here. It doesn't play as well against like Field of Ruin or the control decks. Oh my gosh, that's so gross. At least our cards are awful. So, like, they're plussing, hopefully hitting good cards, and we're not. This is annoying. We're just, like, not going to win either way. I think I'm just going to let him draw four cards. My Rampager is gone too. Yeah, we can just draw them. The only way you lose to Infect is if they Invisible Stalker you out of the game. Yeah, see that's that's our that's our malfunction. <clears throat> they had a push here. We're just gonna pack it in. Okay. Blood right off in a tunnel wife. Alright, we're good. So like we got beat up there. But, again, as you see, we drew one, two, three, four, five, six. And we ditched two more lands. We drew eight lands in our 18-land deck. And, like, and like they've got the cards to go late with us. And that's what they did. They drew their hate card, and they went late. You know, like, that's kind of a beating. But, like, I think I really think that you you want to be able to, like, 
play discard spells and have the ability to kill your opponent on turn four, you know, to serve, to really win in this format. And like, you can play those mid range decks and you can beat, you know, you can like maybe beat, you can beat up on these Jun decks. You're not going to beat up on the Grixis version. And like, I don't know. I always get salt. I mean, like, personal thing, I get salty when I lose those decks. Is there somewhat of a recent shadow matchup set sideways that you guys can recommend? I haven't played the deck in a while. I don't know. I mean, there's one that Ben Friedman did. That's from a hot minute ago. I wrote one from like six months ago. It's on Top Deck Productions. I would like to play first. I think it's Rampant Growth. It's one of these hands you just kind of got to keep and you got to knock the top and hopefully it works out. But like, if your format, if you're like, if your local metagame, okay, so we're playing against Ironworks, I think, is like incredibly degenerate then this Shadow deck is the best deck to play. Because this deck beats up on fair decks like no other deck does. Yeah, we're playing against the Ironworks. So we're just going to take Mirror Retriever because it gets back something and it'll chump block. We just need to be... We need to hit a second land and we need to land this Tarmogoyf. Okay, we're good. This is definitely a Tarmogoyf game because they're just going to gain us enough too much life here. Not bad. We have a lot of Tron and Valakut. Then I, I would honestly think that if there's a lot of Tron and Valakut, the other version's better. Uh, I probably should have gotten a black red. That was a mistake. That was definitely a punt. Uh, Grixis is much better than that. Okay, so Avengers Bear, Terrarium, Terrarium. All right, so we do not have Delirium yet, which is kind of a tilt. We're going to hopefully nab an Ironworks here. We hit an Ancient Strength, which is basically an Ironworks. We're just going to tar fire our. S um, we can tar fire ourselves. Go. Six, eighteen plus six. No, actually, we kill him next turn. If we do this, yeah, we are one and one. Yeah, Grixis is better. When you have four Abzan decks, like this deck's just never gonna beat Lingering Souls. And you used to be able to get away with that because you could, oh, they gain a life in the Inventor's Fair. What a joke. All right, Mirror Retriever. That's annoying because Mirror Retrievers just loop each other and they have chum blockers for days. We're definitely, okay, well, that's a good draw. So what do I do? Just... Traverse for Tarmogoyf, play Tarmogoyf. They're going to get back their Mirror Retriever. I mean, Grixis beats Lingering Souls decks better than this deck does. Like, Lingering Souls is very annoying. So we're doing this to make them commit mana to having a Chump Blocker next turn. Like, we're basically just time walking them. So if they hit an Ironworks here, they, we could be in trouble. Yes. And we're going to scoop when my opponent shows me a loop. We're not going to be that guy that sits here and, you know, screws them or just makes them time out. 
Let me get some water while my opponent goes nuts here. Yeah, so we got them both ways here. The big question is, we're not going to board the Rampager out, so we're not going to show them the Rampager because of Psy. It seems ridiculous, hard to not. Yeah, I mean, you should just, like, if you're playing uh, Moto online, you should just, like, concede. You shouldn't be a jerk. Like, you like you learn so much from playing against this deck that you should just play. Yes. But, like, you should just, con like, make your opponent show you a loop and then scoop so that you can, because, like, the sideboard games are so much different than the main, the, the game one games. So we can't just go willy-nilly here. We want our trophies. I think that we want all of these because being able to keep, like just being able to keep um, whatever it is. We might not have all of these because like we have quite a bit of cards to bring in. <clears throat> I don't surprisingly don't really like Kolagon's command in this matchup because once they have Ironworks in play, it doesn't do anything. And the things you want to shatter, it doesn't do anything. But then again, trophy is kind of the same thing. So we might not even bring in the trophy. I kind of want to leave just enough removal in. We probably don't need these disdainful strokes. We're going to cut Liliana the Veil because it's, it's down ticks not very good. Now, we might change a thing or two here. Trophy's okay, right? Like, it's not that great. I like to board out a forest. We'll bring in another stroke here. Yeah, Lily's only good going up. But it's, like, if they have a Psy in play or anything, they just outgrind you. We gotta leave in enough removal spells to deal with um, whatever it is. To deal with, uh, oh, I can't think. What's the card's name? We need to leave in enough removal spells to deal with Psy. But I think that this is all fine. Yeah, I cut Tarfire. Like, Tarfire is really only relevant to Tarfire yourself. Which, you know, pumps Goyf two extra points. With the Tarma Goyf, sometimes it's like a lightning bolt plus one. Which we're all about. Well, that was especially bad on the draw. So we have a Traverse, so we're going to keep this hand. It's a little slow, and we could get wrecked by a Rogue of the Burn Willows. But, like, having a discard spell, a counter spell, and two threats is just too good. All right, so we're going to get wrecked by a Rogue of the Burn Willows. Maybe I should have mulligan because of that. Uh, oh, shoot. I should have played my Swamp. Because now I've got to go get Overgrown Tomb, and we don't have access to our... Because i got to cast a discard spell. I always get gut by that. I forget of Grove of the Burn Wheels is like a thing. And we're just going to like never get these shadows online. Alright, Terrarian. Yeah, now we just look stupid. I should have played my basic. You know, um, Magnus Lantos cuts... Oh, well, that's pretty much the best draw on our deck. Magnus Lantos cuts whatever it is. Um, I might just cast a Shadow. I'm not even kidding, just to help me get Delirium. So that I can go find a blue source. And grow my Tarmogoyf. a psi don't be a psi please oh it's a psi 
that's a set draw. We're just gonna do this to get delirium. So the next turn we can traverse for either a blue source, probably just traverse for a blue source at this point. I hope it's running out of artifacts. Because once we have this stubborn denial, we should be in good shape. If we hit a blue land, we can just traverse for another Tarmaloid, which would be gas. I'm making blue mana. Is this EE for two? Uh, that's another reason to bring in trophy because it hits engineer explosives. All right, so we can bury ruin back their EE, which is not good. All right, so I basically need to traverse. I think I'm just going to traverse for a land. Go get Breeding Pool. And then traverse for a Tarmoloid. And just get it in my hand. I could traverse for, I could just get Rampager. I'm going to get Tarn Wave because they're going to have to hit this. If they want to spend their entire turn, like, blowing this up, they I guess they could go, like, pop, return, play again. But they're not progressing their board or anything doing that. Maybe that was loose of me to do it. Maybe I should have just waited. Like, just traverse for a blue source pass. Yeah, that was probably stupid on my part. Well, now we have to play Goyf and have Stub up. This is the old, we're going to go get Ironworks, end of turn. One. I guess they only have two lands. They can't do it. They have to just return. They could have a Counterspell, but I don't think, I don't think, when I play that deck, I don't bring Counterspells in against the Shadow decks. You got it, man. You got like nice. Let's get that last card. All right, so we should have a we should have the old checkmate here because they can't activate Inventor's Fair. I guess like uh, Scrap Trawler gives them time. I guess they gain a life too. Yeah, like Scrap Trawler is an out. I guess we had a pretty lucky draw to hit that Dismember, to hit that Psy. There's a steal. They're going to sack this now. Go get, right, get that out of here. Yeah, you just have so much efficiency that it's just like nuts. All right. Well, good draw. Didn't, I guess it did matter because like they theoretically could find a way to block this. Like Tarmogoyf's good here. I mean, it kind of gets it gets wrecked by explosives, I guess. So it's not like that great. But yeah, I mean, Tarmogoyf was just a threat we could play easily, which is just nice. And something you have to know is like to play this deck, Tarmogoyf has to be good. Like for the last, I don't know. Like, last February, Tarmogoyf was really good. Dominated until probably, like, June, May or June, then Grixis became a thing. And Fatal Push just cut Tarmogoyf from the meta. And now there's not Fatal Push there. There's still Path, but, like, that gets everything. Be right back.
This is my third lean. I went 0-3 the first league, and then I went 4-1, and now we're in this one. Tarmogoyf, like, so any creature is good against drag, right? Like, you just want a threat against drag. I don't think that, uh, oh, we're playing against Dylan Hand. This is a hand you just got to keep. You know, you can't mulligan this. We do need to hit a land. But you can't mulligan this. All right, champion. All right. So we're going to get an overgrown tomb. Hit him with the Inquisition here. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. This stomping ground, again, is awkward. So, we can't really take this Thalia's Lieutenant. The problem with not taking the Thalia's Lieutenant is that we need our... I think I'm going to take Lieutenant because we need our Tarmogoyf to be able to brawl. And if this Lieutenant comes down on this champion, it's not going to be able to brawl. And then they're either meddling maging in the dark or they're playing champion and not using their home map. So let's just take this lieutenant. If our opponent meddling mages um, fatal push, then so be it. Then we'll play Tarn Wife and hope they miss. They didn't aim push. Which sucks. Them getting the push is really bad. Maybe I should have thought about that because I had two. So maybe that was kind of loose. I think I've just got to play Tarmogoyf and hope they don't hit the third land. And then next turn we get them with an Inquisition. We hit the Reflector Mage and just hope that Tarmogoyf just kind of holds down the fort for a little while. All right, well, Goyf is going to hold down the fort. Sorry, I've been switching to using my Why not take Reflector? All right, so now we have to take the Mage. Got a Mantis Rider, too. Yeah, now here comes the Mantis Rider. We are super dead. It's probably because I just didn't take the Meddling Mage. If he attacks with this, I'm just going to Battle Rage my Tarmogoyf when I block. But he's not going to. Yeah. That's just a smart play. I don't think we have any outs now. Like, we could hit... I guess if we hit Death Shadow, then we have a shot. Traverse doesn't do it. Yeah, we'll just scoop it up. Go to the next one here. This was another reason why I switched off this deck. I just I don't think you can beat this one. So I guess I didn't value the meddling mage enough. Like the Thalia's Lieutenant was going to be important because it was going to make this thing big. But if I can't push it, so maybe I should have just taken the Lieutenant and plan to go push. We'll turn the stomping ground made that awkward. But, you know, that's kind of where we're at. So let's get rid of these stubs. Um, really on the veil is not very good. What are these mopey cards that we can play here? Yeah, we are playing Dylan. It's got a good name. Um, I'm tempted to cut some number of my thought seizes.
because the discard spells just don't seem that great, but I need to be able to like push through. I think I want these trophies. In fact, do I want brutality? Brutality is probably fine on the play. But I don't really know if we can play the kill everything game. I guess we do need to like kind of combo kill him. Hopefully we can put up a fight here. Focus in here, do some thinking. We have four pushes to, to fight with at their sideboard. We might play first. And his hand's good. We have a tar fire and a push, which is nice. Like we're pretty much, we're very close to delirium. We don't actually have it. We need like a street wraith or a bobble, then we'll have delirium. And then we'll really be cooking. I have to be cognizant of how I fetch also because I have Anger of the Gods in the deck. So I like I need to make sure I get like Blood Crypt and Stomping Ground. Nice thing is I don't have to get a blue land because we side out all of our blue spells. And file. Okay. File draw is kind of sketchy for the home team. You think we can go back to souls? I don't think you can play five color shadow. With because field of ruin just wrecks you so bad. We're just, we're in a lot of trouble to a thalia here. Well, we just goes like vile in thalia's lieutenant. I guess I'm just going to tar fire myself, play two shadows. You're totally about trophy and this vial on the upkeep. I think I'm about tar fire myself and playing two shadows. <clears throat> All right, Liliana's not bad. Liliana almost makes me want to go search for a basic. And then play. I'm going to search for, I'm just going to play Lay of the Land. Because we have like a one and a two drop, then a three drop. So let's just go get this. Then play Shadow. Then hopefully we can like set up either double spelling and like hopefully we get a fetch land. But we need a guarantee. I think we need a guarantee to be able to double spell. Maybe it's loose to hope to hit a fetch land anyways to not save my street wraith or save my tar fire. I'm a tar fire, my traverse.
This is where the fireworks start. Violin two. You just go like Mantis Rider, copy Mantis Rider. That actually wouldn't be that great. Sin Collector. Probably takes my Fatal Push. Can you go like... I think it's loose of me to burn that Traverse last turn. Now that I think about it more. Hmm. Okay. So, do I trophy this free rooter? And crack. So then they, he can do. T, he can easily deal ten points of damage to me next turn. This is two. I don't think he can do ten damage to me next turn. Now he can do ten damage to me if I, if I hit this. Uh, uh, if I hit this, it doesn't really matter, right? Yeah, I guess we just let this go. And like no matter what, I'm gonna hit one of his probably I gotta trophy this or sin collector this. And it might be like I, I haven't played with Vile very much with this and I don't know like the cost. Like how bad is it to trophy this? Yeah, I don't know. I definitely don't really want to trophy something on two because then he can go two drop, two drop. You know? Like, it's probably pretty bad all over. Which is another reason why this isn't a great matchup. You just don't have, like, the removal. Like, you're basically like a team or battle rage combo deck. Well, I mean, is it easier? So it's not that it's. Is it. Is it easier for us to win without Vial in play? Like, I think there's more to it than that because we're also ramping them. Okay. So I need to figure out how to like not die like I probably can't leave my shadows back. So then I have to figure out what I'm doing with this trophy. And I've got to figure out if I need to play slow and try to set up this anger or I don't exactly know. I haven't played it in a while, so I don't know. So 
So I could trophy this and attack. Then they've only got a little bit of power coming at me. Like they, if they hit, play a Mantis Rider, they only crack me to six. And then a fetch land is lethal, is live. Yeah, I think that's my play. I think we're going to swing out here with bulls. Try to put the pressure back on them. If he goes to double block, then I'll just kill one of them. If he goes to the single block, I could just let it happen and then plus on this. Then if he does this, a Mantis Rider kills. Mantis Rider gets my shadow, even if we tick up here. Yeah, I can cast it like a bunch of different times. And no, this definitely, like this deck here is worse against Grixis. It's probably better against KCI. I don't remember what the player. Shadow train. Yo, how do you do the lizard? So I don't want to trade Shadow, play Liliana plus on this. I think I'm going to play, God, I just get so wrecked by a, a Mantis Rider off the top, though. It just if I get Mantis Rider, then like my world comes crumbling down. And now we just plus on this and hope this works out here. God, don't play a Mantis Rider. Uh, oh, that was like the worst. Because now the anger doesn't really do it. So it's like, do I attack and just take this trade? And then play Tarmogoyf? Because he's got to have another one or he would have used the Vile.
Let's just play Tarmogoyf and pass. Because, like, the only way, if he attacks me and I rip Battle Rage, I'm in good shape. I don't really want to trade here. And then even if he vials one in here, then I can go to four, live a turn, kill one, have a chance. Knowing I had this, I probably should have rolled down and picked up a shadow. Reflector Mage, jeez. All right. Now he's going to copy it. Yeah, he's got it. Ooh, we just got Molly Watt there. You say certain ones. Yeah, that's just an absolute Molly Whopping. And that's part of the reason why, I, you know, you kicked off in this deck here is because, like, you just can't, you just can't beat this deck here is a problem so it's like if humans in the control deck didn't exist i would play the four color one but i don't i don't think we can swing it it just doesn't seem reasonable to be able to handle what's going on here All right, playing for the 3-2. Gross. I'm going to Mulligan. This hand's like Traverse into Tarmogoyf on the play. Yeah, that just doesn't seem good enough. This hand's like not much better, but at least we can play Tarmogoyf into Liliana on the play. That works out for John sometimes. You think the first one's fine, Rob? Looks like we're playing a. You had a multi threat hand and a redraw. Yeah, I think it's pretty weak on seven. I think hopefully I can get a better six. The problem is I didn't do that. Now this Tarn Wife's just going to get lightning, lightning bolted and I'm going to hurl. Probably shouldn't have fetched at that. Well, no, I don't want to draw another fetch land, so like thinning the deck out is like marginally good. All right. What are you stopping my draw set for? You're gonna surgical me? Yeah, my fetch lands are better than his fetch lands. Alright, let's play this. God, if this turn work gets lightning bolted, I'm gonna puke. It's gonna absolutely throw up. It's probably what's going to happen. I don't have to play it, but like, you know, what are we doing if we don't play it? Yeah. All right, so we are playing against Jund. All right, well, at least we get to Liliana that thing. We can maybe start to claw our way back into it. Yep, this also works. This is the old Jun thing. So what do we got? We got one, two, three. I'm going to hold this until the end step. I don't think that... Well, yeah, I'm going to hold... Well. So one, two, three, they make it so that if my opponent puts a sorcery in the graveyard, then this bobble makes so I can't dismember the Tarmogoyf. So 
Fatarma Boy. The only problem is the only sorcery that they would put into the graveyard. I guess there's no difference between doing it and the upkeep and figuring out what they drew in now. So we'll just wait. But yeah, we just had a big talk about that, Mr. Rob Meadows. Mm hmm. Because we might not. Like, I doubt they're going to make a Tarmogoyf large enough to be able to. Uh, to survive. Dismember even with this bobble in the graveyard. Probably think we're about to get Blood Elf in the next Tuesday. The Black League Quest they're not going to draw. All right. That probably means we have a K command coming, if I had to guess. Or their hand's just stacked. At least we got a spell. That's probably what's going to happen. We're about to get, like, we're about to push this Tarmogoyf. Now I think I'm actually going to dismember this Tarmogoyf. Because um, I don't want them to K command this Liliana, bring the Tarmogoyf back. But I guess they could just do this now. Oh no, I I messed this all up. Yeah, see, like we 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 read the K command and then still punted. Yeah. I guess we didn't really punt. Like it's still two for two. But, you know, we could have, like, been a little more productive with our turn here. But I could just, like, not push that because it's not going after my, um, I don't want to play this land because I don't want it to go. Because we have three blue cards we can draw and we're hellbent. Yeah, I could have played that turn much better and I just didn't, didn't do it that well. Yeah, now we're screwed. God. Yeah. Maybe we're just bot we're just underneath this Liliana. Man, I forgot how bad it is playing against this Liliana here. When you're from this side of it. Cause like you don't have the blood right else to go over the top of it. Yeah, I'm not liking this deck, unfortunately. Okay, we don't want these. We don't want Tower Fire. Cut a Wraith. Then Rampager's probably just fine as a 4-4 if we draw it later in the game. So we'll like this. <laughs> the problem the problem with this deck is like if you knew that you were going to play against like mono degeneracy then like this deck's okay but we're struggling without lingering souls like if we put lingering souls in our deck we would beat the gen matchup pretty straightforward but without like we just don't have we need lingering souls and, like lingering souls doesn't really help that much against humans and it's like we got a mulligan God, this hand's so good if we find another land. This hand's just actually the stones if we find another land. We've got 18, we have 17 more lands, and we have eight redraws. So we have 22 redraws next turn. So 22 out of 53 is under 50%. Another redraw is 26 out of 53, which is just barely under percent. 
This is a hand, like, if we find a fetch land, we're in really good shape. I just hate mulliganing against these these mirrors here. I think so too, Teddy. Like it's all about resources. And we just we just need them. Like we we're not gonna get bobbed out of the game. If we land these shadows, the game's probably pretty locked up because of these. Alright, the sweat. Well, they're likely going to play a two, and then we'll dismember it. And if we hit a fetch land, we can play two death shadows, which is going to be pretty big. I also think the dismember makes this hand keepable. And I think we're just going to go get the Grixis mana. I think we're just going to, like... Play two shadows. Have stub up. Because we have so many, we have two black spells and two and two blue spells. So we're gonna get bolted out of this game. If we hit a fetch land, we're in pretty good shape. You're trophy me? What a guy. This is where the trophy doesn't look that good. Uh, it looks good now. Unfortunately. I'm going to fetch before I pass the turn. Because I would like to just not play, play any games. With this, uh, do I need another red source? I've only got two red cards in my deck. I can just get Nova Mansion. I don't really want to play any games with these Stubborn Denials. That's another thing. It would have been nice to get Breeding Pool there, I think. The problem is you can't fetch Pool off Bloodstain, which is like another like underlying issue of this deck. Because like the mana base is awkward. Yeah. So like. That's what I'm talking about. Like, Field of Ruin, like, really started messing with this deck. And then when humans came around, it messed with it even more. All right. Well, that finds me a breeding pool, at least. Now, I probably should have played my land and fetched the tapped breeding pool because I was likely going to do that anyways. But that leaves me one point short. So, the best shock land. Oh, we got him. Yep. We got there. I don't know if I'm going to play another league tonight. It's already 10 o'clock. I'm like a bit off of this deck. I'll probably just wrap it up after this game to tell you guys the truth. Because like, I'm a little bit off of it. Because like, I like this deck, but man... You just you just have so many holes, and I think that you can I think you can make that you can mold the Grixis deck if you play with Bobbles to get the feel of this deck, the explosiveness. Yes, this is a tough one, but we're gonna keep this. You just need me to hype you up, dude. Everyone needs a hype man, Rob Meadows. All right, um. Hit this now. We might hit a discard spell. No, we hit a Tongress, which is probably fine. We're probably going to fetch a blue card because we've only got two red cards left in our deck. We have more blue ones. All 
let this come down. I'm just gonna run this goif out there. Do we wanna fetch a stomping ground? We probably actually wanna get blood crypt with this because we already have like we don't want to we want like black mana, a lot of it. So let's just play the Tarmogoyf. We're gonna get Liliana, but then we're gonna immediately roll back and pick up our Tarmogoyf. Inquisition kind of annoying, it takes our two for one, but that also gives us delirium. So we have a kind of a clean, like we get to use all three of our mana next turn no matter what. Which I'm kind of hyped up about. We draw discard spell, we can go like discard spell, traverse, death shadow. If we draw thought seize, that would be a nut. They take our Liliana, it turns on stubborn denial, so we hit them with one of those. They took my traverse, interesting. Interesting. What does that mean? What does taking the traverse mean? Like I'm tempted to just play my Liliana and roll down and get a street wave. Because it makes me think they have another discard spell. Or they have like a maelstrom pulse. I do not understand why you would take this. If you don't take this, this doesn't make any sense over this. And I kind of just want to get my twofer right now. I feel like there's another discard spell coming, especially considering they played a forest. I think they only have one black source. So let's just play this. Let's get our twofer. That might be kind of loose, but I don't know. I just have like a, a kind of a read from their play. If they just go land Bloodbright Elf, that kind of sucks. But like, we're going to be able to go double Tarmogoyf next turn. Yes, yeah, so we got our twofer. Land Bloodbright Elf, and then it's like their hand versus two Tarmogoyfs and a random draw step. There's an L. They hit Liliana here, I'm going to hurl. That's pretty bad, too. This makes me wish that I had played the Tarmogoyf last turn. I wonder if that was right to do. Another Goyf. I guess I just want another Goyf. Then I can go Goyf Wild and be like, dude, pulse me. They only play like one pulse. I don't think it is. I think I've been playing it for three or four leagues. I don't think it is. Yeah, I think I'm just going to like fetch another Tarmogoyf. I'm just going to jam two more Tarmogoyfs. And then have the fourth one in case they pulse me. Though... How do I get them to die to their own bomb? I guess I don't do that. Is like a random draw better than a goif? I don't think it is. I actually think it's pretty solid right now. Because like, you're not that bad against Dredge. Um, Dredge, I think, pushes out some of the go wide creature decks that you struggle with and if we get pulsed here i'm gonna puke i hope he shows it to me just a time away okay um but i think that like i think the dredge is very good against like the humans and the band spirits decks it might not be very good against humans but it can like play against humans um 
I think it pushes, and it might cause more degenerate decks to come into play. God, don't Maelstrom poke me. Whew. Now we just send it with all of our Tarmogoyers because they're all lethal. Our opponent chumps the board away. All right, that's game. Got him. This is game. We went one and one against a deck that's supposed to be our big brother. Which just like there's no reason to play this deck. Like, if if you can't even beat the smaller version of yourself, then it's just like, what are you doing? <laughs> you going nuts? You going nuts there, Rob Meadows? All right, let's open up our pity chest. <laughs> 